let's uh, touch base with the management of Hindalco. They delivered their numbers on Friday and there's lots to talk about with respect to aluminium segment margins, lower input cost which aided the aluminium business, copper price recovery etc. So we've been joined by Mr. Satish Pai, the MD of Hindalco Industries. Mr. Pai, thank you so much for taking time out. There was cost control, efficiency, integrated production, all of that help you overcome any negative operating leverage effects for your aluminium business. Can you tell us what aided your margins there? So you see on the aluminium side, uh, we operated at 90% capacity. So uh, that allowed us to run the operations quite uh, at optimal levels with good efficiency. The input costs were 6% uh, down compared to Q4 because largely because of coal. Uh, I think that the uh, Coal India did a huge amount of measures to bring co coal availability and costs down, which helped us. So when our operations run, uh, you know, we produce nearly 295 kT of metal. Uh, so that's why at these input costs, we got a complete fall through in the margins that allowed us to post that 19.3% uh, aluminum margin. So I think that, by the way, this margin will uh, continue going forward because now the LME has gone up and we believe that we can maintain the costs at this level. So Q2 should be better than Q1. That's encouraging. Uh, can you also tell us what the average utilization during Q1 was across your key smelters and refineries and where is it now if there's been further improvement? How is the domestic demand also for aluminium and copper if you could give us some details? Number of questions. Let me start first with the copper. So copper in the hedge, uh, because of COVID, we had to shut down the copper smelters in the month of April and half of May. So half the quarter they were shut down and hence the copper results were impacted. So the good news is since June, both the smelters are up and running. So Q2, they should be back at their normal levels. The other part of your question was related to the demand and how we are seeing the market. So uh, from June to July and now in August, we are seeing that the, both aluminum and copper demand is back to about 80 to 85 percent of what we saw in January and February. So the demand has come back quite strongly in the second quarter, both in aluminum and copper. All right, sir. And, you know, from June onwards, there's been a sharp recovery in LME, aluminum and copper. So have you taken any price hikes and what's the outlook and what percentage of your volumes are currently hedged? I think that, you know, our prices follow the LME prices. So when LME goes up, uh, our prices just follow. So uh, I think that, you know, uh, uh, the second question on hedging, we have sort of hedged nearly 58% of our metal at about $17, $20. So uh, we have about 40% open. Uh, now, the, the LME uh, going up has been, as you said, quite uh, uh, sharp and, and people are actually wondering whether it can hold or not because there is, uh, the, the inventories are quite high. But the market is very optimistic. They can see that uh, the Chinese demand is picked up very strongly. In fact, the prices of aluminium in China are higher than LME for the first time in many, many years. So there is an optimism about economic recovery, which is driving the prices of aluminium and copper. And in fact, any commodity uh, quite high right now. All right, so thanks for clarifying that. And you know, um... Could you just give us outlook for margins from here on out, and particularly with the copper segment, which saw the biggest impact of lockdown due to your the hedge facility being virtually shut down throughout this period? So um, if you encompass all of this, what's the margin outlook? I think on the India business, you see the aluminium margins are at 19.3, which is one of the highest we have reached. So our big job is uh, we will maintain the margins in aluminium. And the copper, which, you know, the whole uh, EBITDA and the volumes had gone down by 50%. In Q2, Q3, Q4, you should see it coming back to its full normal level and hence normal levels of margins as well. So really, we are talking about the copper uh, performance and the copper EBITDA coming back in Q2. All right. Um, for Novellis, um 
can market market was anyways resilient when it comes to the beverage sector what sort of recovery are you seeing in automotive if you could uh, give us uh, some uh, more color on that and how far away are we from pre covid levels when it comes to auto demand are you getting any feelers from the various uh, people you supply to if you see our press release the first positive was that in asia which is china and korea our automotive shipments were at record levels so in quarter 2 already uh, sorry quarter 1 of india quarter 2 calendar the uh, automotive demand in asia has come back very strongly and in the month of june july we saw the us demand has also reached pre covid levels so our plants in the us are also flat out it's only europe that's slightly slow but even there we are seeing that in the month of august the demand is starting to come back so auto demand is more or less by august september coming back to pre covid levels is what i can say mr pai how is the alaris integration going on uh, and what extent of synergies have already been realized and given its portfolio of specialty products how much more bump up can it give to your ebitda per ton the first thing is that it's been a fairly unique experience integrating a, a company during these covid times because people are not allowed to travel to the different plants and and i think that you know an online integration of a company of this size uh, we have done novelis has done a fairly great job and you know uh, it has been a remarkable experience to close the quarter give the integrated results I think good progress has been made on the synergies related to supply chain procurement uh, etc that can be done. So I think that you know we had committed to 150 million of synergies over the next 2 years to be achieved. I think that we are probably going to do equal if not more than that. So the integration is going well. The uh, the uh, Alaris will be accretive to the EBITDA per ton of Novelis. So Novelis you know is not a 400 plus and i think we will be uh, 450 to 475 dollars a ton on an ongoing basis after the integration is completed because alaris will bring in a uh, very high ebitda per ton of aerospace business which is small volumes but very profitable and the bnc business in the us also should do very well because the us is sort of put tariffs on common alloys coming in from uh, china so the pricing is quite strong in the us so the alaris bnc business also should do well All right so you know like you just mentioned given Alaris's exposure to aerospace do you think the benefits will take slightly longer to play out now given that um you know everything that's transpired in the last 3 months and then also because the performance here is very correlated to your debt reduction plans um are there also going to be some setbacks over there or are you going to be able to deleverage according to schedule as well no actually uh, you know uh, while there have been the negatives on the business top line as you say we have replaced that with a very strong uh, cost and synergy focus so i i guess that you know what we will miss in the the top line of the business we will try to recover from the synergy and the cost side so a huge effort has been put in uh, in novelis now to get the cost structures cost synergies to be uh, going so i think that you know our uh, we had said that once the acquisition closes the novelis net debt to ebitda would come to about 3.8 and within 2 years we'll bring it down to the low threes we still stand by that commitment is all i can say right so so you know just while we're on the subject of this net debt to ebitda has risen sharply to around 3.8x um so what are the could you just elaborate a little bit on the plans you have to reduce the same and also has covid created a bit of a speed bump in terms of the dufel and lewis port sale so as i said uh, the net debt to ebitda ha- is at the end of june 3.8 and we are committed to bring it down to the low threes in the next 2 years so no change on that so uh, we remain uh, we remain committed to that uh, target that we have uh, communicated to the market i think on duffels and lewis port yes the covid has uh, had an impact because everything has got 
slightly delayed because people cannot travel, et cetera. But we are hoping to close Duffels during this quarter. And we are working very hard uh, on trying to close uh, Lewis Port as quick as we can. All right, sir. Thank you so much for taking out the time to chat with us this morning. It was great to get perspective from you. That was the management of Hindalco on their latest numbers.